The material safety data sheet concept or the idea of material safety data sheets using them in chemistry class uh, is required in the state of Ohio. It is one of our state standards, so it will be covered. A material safety data sheet, which I have here for ethylene dichloride, and these are available on the web. You can go to Flynn's website and click on pretty much every chemical you could ever imagine. There's a material safety data sheet available for it. It contains a tremendous amount of information. I refer to it as kind of like the encyclopedia entry for every single chemical. What would you do if you spill some? What would you do if it gets on your skin? Lots of information. Well, many times material safety data sheet presentation can be kind of boring in class. Uh, it's about as exciting as reading a dictionary sometimes. And typically we'll say things like, um, gee, what is the flammability of a chemical ethylene dichloride? Sure, you can go to section three and hazards identification and its flammability happens to be a three. Okay, And that's true of many different chemicals. You, the, the, lots of information available. Well, the question really comes up, how do you assess their understanding? Sure, you can ask questions like, what is the density of this chemical and give the students a material safety data sheet. What I've tried to do is come up with a way for students to use a material safety data sheet to answer a real life type of problem. Okay? And it involves a chemical demonstration which the students like and what I think they get out of this is that they're in on the secret to some extent but they have to really think and apply their understanding of a material safety data sheet in order to answer that question. So if we head over here, I've used this question on a semester exam. By the time we've gotten through the first semester, they've learned an awful lot of chemistry. The way that I perform this demonstration, uh, slightly different from Lee Merrick, who I believe created this, is that the students have, this would be question one on their semester exam. And I tell them, you guys are like beginning teachers and I'm showing you this demonstration. Before the students would arrive, I would take an empty Erlenmeyer flask such as this. I'll take a mystery chemical such as this. It's a mystery to them and I've tried to cover anything that would give them a little bit of, a, of an advantage in terms of knowing what it is. It's a mystery chemical. It's a mystery to them, but obviously a teacher should know what it is. What we do is we're going to add one full squirt of this chemical into the bottom. Well, as I tell the students, the way that we would perform this demonstration is the students would now come into the room. Hi guys, gals, welcome to chemistry. Uh, I want to show you this demonstration. Um, I've got here an empty Erlenmeyer flask. I would walk over to the, the sink on the demo table and I would fill that, vol or that uh, Erlenmeyer flask up fairly close to the top. And I would say things like, many of you are seniors, you've oftentimes commented about how much you love the water here at our school, and uh, it has some pretty unique properties. And I'd like to show you some of those properties, and one of them, you may not have even realized this over the past four years, would be that the water tends to be very flammable. And what we see, oh my gosh, the water is burning. Holy cow! This is really scary. Well, the mystery chemical, the mystery chemical really makes all the difference in the world. I'm going to extinguish the, the, fly, the fire by putting this watch glass over top. There it is. The student's job, or what they're told, there are three basic options, as I see it, for the possible chemicals that could be inside this bottle. 
the three different chemicals. On the test, it would say, attach to your test, you'll find three material safety data sheets. One of them would be ethylene dichloride. One of them, one possible choice would be hexanes. And the other would be isopropyl alcohol. They're provided with a material safety data sheet for each one of these three and told, determine the identity of the mystery chemical that the instructor added prior to the demonstration. Their job is to use all of the information contained on the material safety data sheet to solve the problem. And it tends to be a very challenging process for the students because there's a lot going on there. And that's all the information that I'm going to share with them. They need to use the material safety data sheet to answer the question. The key information and sometimes it's very difficult for our students to, to separate out what's important and what's not important. All three, now this, it's important for teachers to recognize, this would not be given to the students. This information is contained on the material safety data sheet. It's not listed out for them. They need to sort through the front and the back of the material safety data sheet to determine what is important. In the student's mind, what they would notice, what had to be true here, if we go back to this, what has to be true, whatever's in here must have been flammable. This is what caused the fire. Thank heavens it's not the water in our school. <laughs> I've had some students, when I've repeated the demonstration, say, oh, please tell me that's not going to light on fire. And it, it does not. The water is not flammable. It's all about the mystery chemical. Whatever substance, it must be flammable. Well, of the three options, we see ethylene dichloride has a flammability rating of three. That's very high, as does hexanes, as does isopropyl alcohol. At this point, just based on flammability, we can't answer the question. Then we would go back, and again, this will take our students some time. There's a lot of information on the material safety data sheet. There's a lot of information we've talked about over the course of a semester. But what they should recognize is if water has a density value or specific gravity value of about 1.0, they should recognize whatever substance it was needs to be towards the top because where it was burning was up here. The chemical had to float to the top of the water. It could not be at the bottom, otherwise the water would have covered it up and it would have been at the base of the Erlenmeyer flask. So again, as we look at this, they would then have to find the specific gravity values. Ethylene dichloride has a density or specific gravity of about 1.3. Therefore, it is more dense than water. Ethylene dichloride would be expected to be at the bottom of that Erlenmeyer flask. Hexanes, 0.66 grams per milliliter. That fits what we need for it to be. It would be on top. Isopropyl alcohol has a specific gravity of approximately 0.79. That would also be expected to be on top of the water, having a density, or specific gravity rather, lower than that of water. So at this point, we could eliminate the ethylene dichloride because that would be at the bottom. Back to the material safety data sheet they go. We would also have to think, and this really can be difficult for students, we added one squirt, approximately two milliliters, ballpark figure of two milliliters, to this flask. 
This is a 500 milliliter flask. If it's all going to be burning up here, whatever that mystery chemical is must be concentrated up here at the top. Interestingly enough, and what makes this Lee Merrick demonstration so brilliant, is that if you look, you really are not able to see a separation there. And yet, there really is a layer on top. Okay? I've had students come up during the exam and look at, look, 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 and they can't see anything on top. Well, solubility. If we look here, hexanes would be insoluble, so it's not going to mix with the water, and it, its specific gravity value would suggest it would be at the top. Isopropyl alcohol, while its density is nice, that is soluble in water. And so we would expect isopropyl alcohol to be mixed throughout the entire Erlenmeyer flask throughout all of the water. And once it gets diluted, two milliliters being diluted to nearly a half a liter, that, there's no way that that would light on fire. Okay? There's no way at such a weak uh, concentration that isopropyl alcohol would be still flammable. Okay? This is a nice example of forcing the students to use a material safety data sheet what we're trying to get at would be those higher level thinking skills to ask them a question beyond something like what is the melting point where they can certainly look and see and just copy it down, but rather here's a problem, apply your understanding of chemistry. And there are a handful of other uh, types of problems where we can throw a material safety data sheet to have students explain uh, the chemistry behind a demonstration and this is one of my favorites. So hopefully you'll enjoy it as much as I think my students do.